Hi everybody, I'm Cass from On Tabletop and welcome to Indie Thursday. I meant to have Lance here today as my co-presenter, but unfortunately he seems to have gotten distracted. Wrong universe. No, put that take over. No, back in the shell. Damn it, John. Back where you put it. You never have let me have fun. Hi Cass from On Tabletop. What, Hi, are, Lance, what are we looking at today? Today we're looking at indie games and awesome. indie game products. Awesome. So this is uh, a vlog I'm really passionate about uh, because I really support small companies getting into this industry. It's getting bigger and I think, you know, the more people that can break into it, the better we get better products. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today uh, is actually the reason the vlog exists. Mm -hmm. uh, this prototype landed on our desk in December and this is a painter's ergonomic 360 handle from Redgrass Games. So. Lance, you're the painter, not me. If you want to talk about it. <laughs> sure. Uh, as, as with most holders, I mean, uh, they're kind of all the same after a while. But this is pretty interesting because this has been 3D printed to be ergonomic, meaning more comfortable for uh, you using it more. Uh, so it's really good for like um, repetitive strain injury, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this works really well because as a painter, uh, I paint with my right hand, hold with my left. This is pretty comfortable as it is now holding this like this. And just by the turn, using my thumb and index finger, I can turn that pretty handy. And I can use this hand to lean on top of this one. Paint pretty successfully, it works quite well. Uh, the putty, while I kind of thought it was kind of silly to begin with. Silly putty, um, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> It uh, it actually works really well. It holds a mini. It doesn't seem to pull any paint off it either. It seems to be working quite well. Um, I'm pretty impressed with this actually. And the turn on it, there's no uh, friction. There's a little bit of friction there, but I think that was just a little bit of dust. But actually, there's no friction on that at all. So whenever you're actually painting, you can get a good turn on that. And that's Pretty awesome. Well, what we have to remember as well is this is a prototype, so it'll be a lot smoother whenever the Kickstarter campaign launches, which mm -hmm. is today at five o'clock, by the way. Awesome. Um, so there will be a link in the description if you want to back it. But what I like particularly about the mounting putty, which you, uh, we're talking about, is that it doesn't limit the base the way that a clamp would. No. Um, and there's less chance of damage to the base as well. Yeah, because sometimes clamps do like damage it. John, how, do, how have you found like clamps and stuff? John's the background. <laughs> I've been waiting for my moment. This is my moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I don't mind the clamps so much, um, particularly uh, in particular the, the Games Workshop one, because it only takes the very edge of the base. It doesn't clamp around yeah. the, the whole side of it, so it doesn't damage anything there. We've um, had ones that have had like hooks. Yeah, I've, well. I've used ones that have had pins as well, yeah. where you set the pins to the size of the base and then press the mini in. That's awkward because yeah, it means yeah. you have to understand the clamp just as much as you have to <laughs> figure out how you're painting your model. So what do you think of this though? This one, I've I've been playing around with it. Now I'm left handed so I'm holding with my right and I find that motion very natural to me just mm -hmm. to hold and just work and control it like that. What I had been thinking about after I'd seen it first was I'd like a little bit more of a pronounced curve on this side. So you hold it differently than I do? Yeah, with a bit more material. So you I hold it the curve on the outside. I hold it the curve on the inside. That doesn't feel right to me because no. it, want, it wants <laughs> to crush these three fingers down. Yeah. Which isn't as comfortable. But I like holding it that way. So then, it, then again, if you're making a Kickstarter, you can't supply to everyone. Everyone's hands are different. So what I, would, gonna... what I would say though, as, as one thing I noticed that I think the, the product potentially would need, Mm -hmm. is a magnetic base. You know, a little thing to set on your desk as a magnet ah. and a bit of metal on the bottom so that if you're yeah. working with a heavier mini, particularly a, a metal mini, when it's sat like this, you might lose just so it. It's not too uh, just so it's not. Yeah, so something to make it firm on the, the table because then you can still paint there yeah. as well, but you have the option of lifting it up. Or maybe even just remove it. Off it. Potentially. Because then, yeah, then potentially. it's less top heavy. Okay, so the next game we're going to talk about is Stonehenge in the Sun. Now this game's been covered already on the Beast Awards News by Ben, so you've probably seen it. Um, this is really cool, it's a balancing game but it's also got dexterity elements. Uh, so in Stonehenge in the Sun you're essentially building Stonehenge, you're playing competitively against other people. Um, 
And the idea is that in the center there is a ball which is hung from the ceiling, uh, like a, a metal ball on a string. Um, I think they actually have an image, if I just scroll there. So it's hung from the ceiling. Um, and then you place your blocks around it. And I think there's a wee video while I play in the background that'll show you the rules. Um, so you're essentially building up these blocks and you can build them up to two stories high. You can also move them and create gates. Um, and every time you place a block, you swing the ball across from your marker to the other player. Now the idea is that you avoid knocking down the blocks whenever that happens. Um, and it keeps going and any blocks you do knock down become minus points for yourself. And at the end, you total up your minus points and the person with the least amount knocked down is the winner. Um, it's actually a very, very simple game to uh, understand, very simple game to play, but it's very beautiful whenever it's made up. And that's kind of kind of the reason why this stands out uh, is that it's it's got that kind of aesthetic that would appeal to people. And it's easy to play with kids and adults and everything else. There's also now... Uh, this is the, the main rules, but there's a variant rule where instead of just swinging the ball through the center of Stonehenge, you uh, spin it round. So as it goes circular around it, and then you have to build up as fast as you can before it comes back into the center. It's pretty cool as well. So yeah, this is this is one that I, I really like. Um, the Ben really likes. Actually, we're pretty excited about it in the office. So um, and from this, uh, which is Dexterity, onto a game which is all about strategy, which Ryan is holding in the front office for me. The last game I want to talk about is a game called Thrive. Now, this was originally uh, released, well, not released, this was originally designed uh, back in 2016 as Eigenstate uh, by a designer called Mark Garter. It's a fairly simple to understand game. This was picked up by Adam's Apple Games, um, who are the guys that did Sword Crafters, uh, if you remember it. Um, and it should be kickstarting this month, next month, mm -hmm. like the end of January. Um, so it's very simple to play. This is a print and play that they have on their site, and we'll put a link in the description for that. But Brian, if you, if you want to explain it. Yeah, sure. So if you're familiar with stuff like Onitama or even chess, which Onitama is based on. Onitama is like 5x5 five five chess. Uh, this is on a 6x6 six six board. And instead of little uh, Kung Fu Masters, we have little Lotus Flowers, and we have six of these each. Uh, instead of having predetermined movements like we might have in Onitama with the five cards or in chess with each piece, uh, we get to fill in these little pips and in the uh, actual edition it will be pegs in the little wooden blocks. For the pen and paper it'll just be we use our pencil to scrub in the little marks and that mean, that determines how we can move. So if I was to scrub in this one, I can move to here in addition to here. So. That's how the game works, and essentially you're trying to capture uh, all of your opponent's Lotus Flowers and be the king of the pond? I don't know. Ryan and I have been playing this solidly for 48 hours, and mm -hmm. I have yet to beat him. He is a master of this game. I've played a lot of Onitama, okay? Okay. <laughs> so, I think... Oh, you have gone. It's my go. Yes, it's your go. Ah, now this, this is actually quite interesting, because Ryan currently has a Lotus Flower which can move to any of these four positions which leaves me stuck because he can take any of these three. Now, on your turn, you move and then you place two pegs. Mm -hmm. And to get out of this... You can't. It's an impossible trap that I've set that no one could possibly spring from. Interesting. Not even, not even Houdini, the game's master himself. Hmm. Uh, although there's a couple of... There's definitely there's, a couple, there's of, couple of different ways. I think what I am going to do is allow you to take one... Mm -hmm. I can see. So that's my move, mm -hmm. and then if I place there and there, mm -hmm. regardless of which one you take, mm -hmm. I should be able to take yours. Indeed. So my strategy in this has been to kind of test the idea that you can make one gigantic super soldier lotus flower that can move anywhere in the board and then just leave the rest of them uh, intact. And I don't know, uh, we have to play it a lot more because yeah. I don't know if this is not necessarily a design flaw, but something which is a bit of a weakness in the game. Uh, in making the rest of your pieces redundant for one super soldier. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a type of uh, dynamic that uh, arises from this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this one in here, take that, and then I'll start making this one a little bit more powerful. Oh. So, I'll be taking that next turn. I'll, I'll be taking that. I'll be taking that next turn. <laughs> so, the thing that I, I like about... Uh, they keep on going to call it eigenstate but mm. thrive as it is now it's just the base strategy of it i'm not overly fussed on this kind of lotus flower 
a seed pod idea, but everything needs a skin, I suppose. But I would love a version of this, which is just black and white and plain, but I, I'm a minimalist yeah, sure, at heart. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so the Kickstarter for this should be launching at the end of the month. We'll put the print and play in the description um, and do do give it a go because it's an amazing game. We've, we've really enjoyed it. Yeah. And that's it, guys. Uh, we'll hopefully be doing these vlogs once a week. Um, but do let us know if there's any products that you've seen that you like that are smaller companies that you think should be featured because we really want to give a voice to smaller companies and, and open it up in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, folks, that's it. I'm just going to... Gonna, gonna win this game now. Uh -huh, yeah. This is a ruse. This is a silly ruse. <laughs>